welcome to the uh, lecture class of our YouTube channel SOMA that is uh, a structured online medical academy uh, I'm Dr. Sultan Arifin from Rongpur Medical College today we are gonna discuss about the bilirubin metabolism okay bilirubin metabolism it is the one of the important mechanism that you're gonna need in every stage of your practice if you're a doctor of course and of course for your uh, academic purpose written or viva and also for uh, interpreting interpretation of different uh, disease data investigation profile so uh, this is very important uh, we have two important mechanism that you're gonna need and that is um, bilirubin metabolism and the renin angiotensin aldosterone mechanism so these two system i'll cover these two system uh, today uh, uh, we'll just talk about the bilirubin metabolism so uh, let's jump into the main section okay okay before we go into the main topic you have to know the lifespan of rbc okay the lifespan of rbc is 120 days and after 120 days this uh, rbc are destroyed within the spleen by the phagocytic system and there it releases the bilirubin so uh, we're getting this uh, bilirubin from the spleen okay now that you have known this fact now let's uh, jump into the main section okay here we can see the uh, uh, rbc this is a 120 a day is old rbc that is after 120 days this rbc is engulfed the engulfed by the macrophage and there the rbc is uh, split it into heme and globin okay and this globin is a globular protein but not the globulin i repeat this is globin and not globulin Okay. and this globin is also a protein so it will be ultimately uh, metabolized into amino acid and thereby it will go to the amino acid pool okay so uh, this uh, globin gets out of our picture from this metabolism and we are left with the hemoglobin okay and hemoglobin you know the hemoglobin is composed of uh, iron and porphyrin okay the iron will also go into the iron store and ultimately from rbc our final product will be the porphyrin which will be our main concern okay and this porphyrin uh, also composed of tetrapylor wing okay this porphyrin is uh, converted into bilivartin there's a very complex mechanism uh, between these two you don't have to know that you just have to know that porphyrin is converted into bilivartin okay and this then bilirubin is uh, reduced to bilirubin okay here this is the reduction mecha mechanism you convert this bilirubin bilirubin into bilirubin okay and this bilirubin is unconjugated bilirubin okay this is unconjugated bilirubin we are producing this from spleen and it will go to the liver and forms the conjugate bilirubin and this unconjugate bilirubin will go to the liver and there it will be uh, converted into conjugated bilirubin by udp glucuronide transferase enzyme okay so uh, before the liver we are have uh, we have the unconjugated bilirubin released from spleen into the bloodstream then it goes into the liver and it will be converted to conjugated bilirubin and this conjugated bilirubin will uh, will be the composition composition of uh, our bile okay and it will be ultimately entered into the enterohepatic circulation and again be transferred into the liver and this enterohepatic circulation is uh, maintained by 
conjugatable rubin okay not unconjugatable rubin okay and this unconjugatable rubin is also called indirectable rubin not soluble in water but soluble in lipid and all these go just against the conjugatable rubin that is formed in the liver okay so on this bilirubin we are getting the unconjugated bilirubin okay and up to this mechanism from first all these were happening in the spleen and then this unconjugated bilirubin will enter into the liver and there which will be converted into conjugated bilirubin now from this uh, part of this mechanism this occurring in the liver and up to this from rbc up to the production of bilirubin these are occurring in the spleen okay now you see this is unconjugated bilirubin before entering the liver it has suffix un so it is also called indirect okay indirect bilirubin unconjugated bilirubin and they are non soluble in water okay these suffix are all same unconjugated bilirubin they are not soluble in water and they are indirect bilirubin and they are soluble in lipid and this all go just reverse of this conjugated bilirubin okay you have to remember by the suffix the unconjugated bilirubin the suffix indirect bilirubin they are also non soluble in water but soluble in lipid okay so as this unconjugated bilirubin is soluble in lipid it can cross the blood brain barrier and thereby deposits in the basal ganglia and forms a clinical condition called chronic teras okay and this conjugated bilirubin is direct bilirubin it is uh, soluble in water so it passes through the urine okay and it is lipid insoluble now for your viva and retain there is difference between unconjugated and conjugated bilirubin and the mcq questions you will find it as set up questions like this they're true false or true false mcq multiple choice so you have to you have to clear a conception from this it's very easy unconjugated bilirubin they are non-soluble in water and they are also indirect bilirubin but soluble in lipid and this all go against or reverse for conjugated bilirubin okay that's all for today subscribe to our youtube channel structured online medical academy stay connected with our facebook group clinical Galpo, and our whatsapp group thanks for watching more videos are coming have a nice day